and Samantha Lee's divorce really has seen a dramatic turn on social media. The couple, unfortunately, after breaking up, have gotten so much on social media. And of course, they're throwing tantrums at each other. But guess what Samantha Lee also has exposed in the latest uh, in our video? Well, this is the latest on Pinax News. And of course, the drama is getting nastier. For more news, do well to visit pinaxnews.com with any comments. Please will be appreciated in the comment section during today's episode. Let's get started. Now, Tyrese was the first person to come out to expose the relationship that really has then saw between himself and uh, his exchange partner, that's Samantha Lee. But Samantha has also come to respond to it. Now, let's do check this out and come back and see what exactly Tyrese also has been talking about. Now, he is condemning what the ex, uh, uh, his ex-wife has said, and of course, is throwing some hard punches at her. Take a look at what Samantha Lee also did say and come back and see what exactly Tyrese has been saying. Um, and the child that I look at every day, and like she looks like him, you know, <laughs> she looks like us. I have a lot of respect yeah. for him. I'll always, there will always be a part of me that will love him because of like what we share together. Um, and the child that I look at every day, and like she looks like him, you know, <laughs> she looks like us, yeah. and him, like you know. It's, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just beautiful. That is something. Are, are you now in the spirit of potentially even being able to rekindle a relationship? Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, can we get an edit? Uh, <laughs> is that a hard Jesus. question? It is. It's, a, it's, it's loaded because of the fact that there's been so much that's happened, you know? Like, there's been so much that's occurred. Um, okay. It's my daughter's father. So... I would, I would say this. I would say that if we were both going to show up and we were both going to fight for it equally and sacrifice equally. Like, you know, things that I needed and, you know, things that, you know, he needed. I wasn't perfect. Yeah. Um, your girl ain't perfect. Um, so I, I, w I would say that if, if, if we were both willing to fight and we were both willing to do certain things, then yes. Something about that actually makes me very happy. No, I don't know if that makes I don't, me happy. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, like, if it's if it's it's my child, like, you know, no one wants a broken family. No, no one that's that. exactly Facts. that's what so, it is for me. Yeah, like if it was something that it was like it was if it was a situation, you have to hear me, sir. Excuse me. You have to hear me all the way. <laughs> you have to hear me all the way. Yes, okay, no, okay, that I'm was listening. a month thoughtly over there. Now, quickly. Tyrese also has responded to this. Now it's nasty. I do check this video out and see what he has been talking about. In cameras. And I was literally in an airplane on my way home to fight for my marriage and my family. You're heartless. What's up, everybody? This is the world famous Ed Lover, and you are watching Forgotten Kings TV. That's right. Forgotten Kings TV. Come on, son. All right, um, hold on. Look, man, I was not going to respond to this video of my ex that's now gone viral. She is loving it. Congratulations, you went viral again over something else that you said because you're trying to build up your YouTube page and get your followers up. Listen, man, listen. If you had people in your ear that influenced you into leaving your husband and your one-year-old child, your innocent one-year-old child. We both were divorcee kids, grew up in toxic environments, torn in between our old family, new family, stepfather, stepmother. That's a life that we both lived. And you packed up a one-year-old put a COVID mask on top of the rain cameras, and I was literally in an airplane on my way home to fight for my marriage and my family. You're heartless. None of your friends recognize you. This is all about money. If you had friends in your ear, you're lying, you're gaslighting, you're playing. The only person that was in your ear was your mama. Her name is Patricia Randolph. 
You didn't have people in your ear. The amount of people that was supposedly in your ear, you also had a whole lot of people like Aventer Gray, Taffy Dollar, Creflo Dollar's wife, who married us. You had a whole lot of people in your ear telling you that you're about to do something stupid, impulsive, and y'all are actually not going through anything that would make you want to leave your husband. Let's go even further. When Aventer Gray and Pastor John Gray were having their own marital issues at the time, you arranged a therapy session with Aventer Gray at our house. And when she walked out of her therapy session, she walked into the foyer where the bumblebee is, and there was 50 boxes with like seven or eight people there packing up all the shit to leave the house. And I was in an airplane on my way home to try and fight and save our marriage. So if you had people in your ear at the time, they must be still in your ear because you're still trying to get $20,000 a month for a five-year-old. You make $160,000 a year on your own. This is all a game. You're clout chasing. You're something that I don't even know. A simple woman, not into materialistic things, don't, want, don't care about fame and mansions and popularity. You're everything that you told me and all of your friends and loved ones that you wasn't. If you wanted to be famous, boo-boo, that's all you had to say. You didn't have to play this game that you wasn't. Now you are here playing on single mothers and their emotions playing on women that are actually in abusive relationships and fucked up marriages that are toxic and dark and dysfunctional. That's not what, what, what that was. You think I would have a song entitled, I don't think you ever loved me if I didn't really feel that way? You think I would have a song out called Love Transaction if I didn't realize that it was never love, it was just a transaction? This shit is about money. You've hired three law firms trying to fucking suck me dry. I'm approaching a million dollars in legal fees and we had a prenup. You already tried to ask me to come back. You already tried to reconcile. I told you I was in a relationship with Zelly and I was not willing to go and break this off or cut this woman off because you decided to wake up on a Wednesday and come back and play in the sandbox. Everything about the way you left me was heartless. It was evil. You never considered me, your marriage, and let alone your innocent one-year-old child. She had to celebrate her second birthday apart. And if you really are really suddenly caring about the effects that you've had on me and your family, why don't you sit these fucking lawyers off of me? Call your lawyers right now and tell them that everything that you're still trying to get right now, you don't want it no more. $20,000 a month for a child? Our prenup says no alimony. Our prenup said everything that the prenup said. You're trying to crack the prenup. And it's been three years of it. I should have never hired a fucking attorney. I had a prenup. Everything that I was supposed to give you in the prenup, I gave it to you. You want more. And it's been three years. I've moved on. I'm with Zelly. You moved on. I don't even want to tell niggas the first nigga you started dating when we broke up. Because you're going to go viral from that. If I were to tell niggas who you started dating... As soon as we broke up, you would go viral from that. All you want is attention. I don't even want to tell niggas the first nigga you started dating when we broke up. Because you're going to go viral from that. If I were to tell niggas who you started dating as soon as we broke up, you would go viral from that. All you want is attention, you want Facebook followers, you want Instagram followers, you're trying to be a life coach, and you're trying to get niggas to drink the Kool-Aid. You fucking with a real one right here. Everybody can see through your bullshit. I may be alpha, I may be loud, I may appear to be a narcissist, 
as some niggas would say in the comments. Girl, you was good to leave that nigga. He's a narcissist. No, she's a fucking narcissist. Not only is she a narcissist, but she's a sociopath as well. And what is a sociopath? Someone who will maliciously and vindictively do some shit, fuck over you, hurt you, be made aware of the fact that they inflicted trauma and pain on you and not even call you and text you to say they sorry. Did you think about the effects that it was gonna have on me or our innocent child when you left me the way you did? Did you think about anything? No, it's all about Samantha. So now, go ahead and chase whatever career you're trying to chase. Go ahead and go viral. Go ahead and keep doing your goofy ass podcast and Miracle Mondays and whatever the fuck else you're trying to build. Over here, I don't want no one to confuse me releasing songs the way Adele released songs about her ex-husband, the way Jasmine Sullivan and Mary J. Blige released songs about their exes when they get cheated on, lie, get fucked. Using me wanting this woman back. If I wanted her back, I would have got her back. I don't want Sam. She may be saying that she was thinking about, no. If you had people in your ear when you left me, those same people are in your ear three years later because the fucking lawyers are still on my back every day. Go sell this shit to somebody else. Look at every interview I've done from Sway in the morning to the breakfast club to everything that I've been posting and everything that I've been saying. And if you don't like me, nigga, I don't like you. I don't need none of you women in my comments saying they like me. I don't care to be liked. I got my heart broke. I was married. I was with this woman for five years. I never cheated. I got more access to pussy than most niggas I know. I was a good man, a good husband, and very, very focused on my family and my children. And the twenty-five or twenty-six hundred dollars that I was giving Samantha since she decided to leave me, I was giving her that for two years straight without a court order. Find another 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 that she's not getting because the prenup is protecting me. Dad. And she's yes. Lawyer question. Okay. So at the end of the day, man, listen, I am not here to have any of y'all to keep drinking the Kool-Aid. Y'all are going to have to fucking wake up and understand that when re relationships and marriages ends, contrary to what the world believes, it ain't always a cheating man who's verbally and physically abusing you, fucking over you, doing something. It's very simple. If it ain't about Samantha, it ain't about nothing. Thank you.